What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with rotary craft Now today guys We're gonna be working on setting up a fully automated canola seed farm Which is actually gonna be really important to have for our base But before we jump into all that and why it's important and how we're gonna set it up I do want to go over a couple of things that I've changed since last episode in the grinder setup over here And you can probably already hear if I'm a little bit more quiet uh, that I did enable the sounds for the machines and for the engines They're just a little bit lower. They're at 0.3 instead of 1 so I'll be quiet for a second so you can hear those Okay, so hopefully you can hear them. If there is an issue, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'll keep tweaking them a little bit as we go until we get them perfect. But a lot of you guys really wanted to hear them, so there they are. Now, with this setup, I did change a couple things. A lot of you guys told me that I should use the worm gear, which is essentially going to work as a 16 to 1 gearbox. It does lose a little bit of power, I believe, and... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just it loses some power and speed, but the grinder is able to work on this with the steam engine without using any lubricant. This isn't going to break. You can't even right click on it to uh, access a UI for it. So the grinder runs a little bit slower, but uh, no lubricant is required. And then back here, we can avoid using lubricant for the pump by using two DC electric engines using a shaft junction which is going to combine the two torques of four to reach eight, which is more than, or which is just enough for the pump. Uh, previously, you only needed four, so you could use a regular DC electric engine, but that did change, making it a little bit more annoying to actually set up a pump. So uh, now for the stuff that we're actually going to be doing today related to the farm, this is a really complicated build for what we're going to be getting. And it's because we're, we want to fully automate it. So right now I've been getting my canola seeds just from out here at this farm, and that's been working perfectly fine. But we want to mess around with this, get everything fully set up, so we're going to be using all the stuff in this chest today, and I should actually clean out my inventory a little bit just to make it easier. Actually, I do need the redstone. I just got to ditch uh, a lot of these, uh, pretty much the stuff from clearing out this area out here, and then we should be good to go. So, we do have to do a little bit of crafting today, and by a little bit, I mean an okay amount, but for the most part, I have the stuff in here uh, already crafted. We just need to shift-click on the recipes to get it. So, I'm going to pull all of this into my inventory, and get going on the crafting so first things first we're gonna need four of the we're actually gonna need we'll start out with what i have typed in we're gonna need to make one more shaft junction we do need uh two for today because we're gonna have two different pump setups and i already have one they do come in sets of two though so we do waste a little bit we're gonna have one extra yeah so the shaft junction is right there so the next thing that we're gonna be doing is uh setting up four steam engines so uh, we need to click those and get one, two, three, and four. So there we go on that front. Now what we need are three fans, and I accidentally crafted one already when I was working on this, and I try and not craft everything on camera, um, or I try and not craft like any of the end items on camera, just because I want you guys to be able to see the recipes and everything. So... Uh, we only need to make three of these, so we do have a little bit extra in here for the recipe, which we're not going to use. Then what we need to make uh, is going to be... I'm trying to think of all the stuff that we actually need to make for this one. We need to make two pumps, so get those, one and then two. Then we're going to need to make... What, we actually do need to do a little bit of crafting over here real quick, which is going to be making this wool into black wool. And that is because we're going to need to make an item vacuum which is going to require black wool so there we go we have an item vacuum and there's one more thing that i think we need to make that i'm forgetting about right now which is i gotta actually look in here to find the name of it it's going to be transmission and then it's going to be a clutch okay so we need to do, make a uh, three clutch so that we can turn the fans on and off so if we go to clutch we should be in a good position to do this uh, also, along with the noises, oh, wrong one, I am using my mechanical keyboard this time. Hopefully the noises aren't that bad for you guys. If they are, feel free to let me know. But I was told a long time ago that I should just not worry about using the mechanical keyboard. It shouldn't be that bad. So we're trying it out for this episode, and possibly the in-game noises will cover it up. Possibly they won't. I don't really know. But if it's that bad, I'll stop using it. If not, then, you know, whatever. Just feel free to let me know in the comments with all these different changes I've been making. Okay, so I believe that's pretty much all that we're going to need. I might be, I feel like I'm forgetting one thing, and I'm going to realize it later that I'm forgetting it, but for the time being, oh, we need to make DC electric engines. That's what it is. We need four DC electric engines. Okay, so there we go. One, two, three, four. Now we've used up all the stuff in here. I knew we had a little bit extra, and we need to sleep before we can head outside. 
and start doing some work on this. So I'm really excited to set this up mainly just because it's going to be an awesome build. Uh, it's, it's pretty complicated, like I said, for what we're getting from it, which is actually awesome. So I'm going to wait until I guess that's not going to suck anything up. I do need to get some water from this. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to come outside now, get away from those noises in there. Now you can get the full effect of my keyboard. You can hear the clicky keys if I go. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a Razer keyboard. I don't even know the name of it exactly. Uh, I can't remember it, but uh, it is a very clicky keyboard. So first things first, I guess we can set up an infinite pool right over here just to make things easier because we are going to need to set up two infinite pools for our two DC electric engine pump setups. And I figured out that two by two is more than fine. I set up a three by three at the beginning of last episode. And I said that that's because the pump might be able to take up all the water. It might be if you're running it at a higher speed, but from what I've seen with the two DC electric engines and a shaft junction, that's not an issue. So two by two is fine for that. So what we need to do right now is set up a nine by nine farm. And I think we'll just center it like right here might be a good spot to center it. Probably, I think, yeah. So we'll just, we'll say right here is the center and we should be able to go four to each side. Actually, you know what? We should move this over one just because I want to make sure we have enough room. So one, two, three, four. So we got enough room on this side. And two, three, four. We got enough room over there and we can walk over there. Nice. So we do have to do a little bit of hoeing here just because uh, obviously we are planting canola seeds. It sounds really loud. Hopefully it isn't that loud for you guys. Ooh, is this hoe? This hoe should work for the rest of this land. Uh, and once we do this, we're going to be doing... It's kind of confusing how I have to describe it, but we're going to be doing three strips. So one down the first set of three, then another down this set of three, and then another. So if you don't want to do a 9x9, nine nine, you can do a 3x9, or a 6x9, or a 9x9. Nine nine. It's really up to you. Now what we need to do is... I'm just going to chuck this. I don't know. We'll, ju we'll just throw it down right up here. We'll do some landscaping with that piece of dirt. And we need to get this canola right down here because we do need seeds to plant. So there we go. We can just harvest all this because we're not going to be using this anymore. And we can fill this area in. The only thing is I'll wait to fill this in because if you don't know, uh, you can't even plant these on dirt that's not uh, technically farmland yet if it doesn't have, if it's not like saturated dirt. I don't know if that's like a new change with anything you plant, but... Uh, I don't recall that being something when you tried to plant like wheat or something, but it's irrelevant. What we're going to do now to start up is we're going to set up the fans and I'm actually going to set these up back here, uh, mainly because they're a little bit loud. So if we set them up on this side, they won't be as close to the base. Uh, and what we're going to do is set them up. I believe we just want to set them up right here. And you can see that this is going to show the area they're going to blow in, which is why you're going to be, uh, like I said, setting up a three by nine for each one. So this is going to affect these set of three by nine right here. Next one's going to go right here. And the last one's going to go right there. And you can see they're going to be getting uh, the power from behind them. And that is where the clutch and the steam engines are going to come in. So I'm going to clear out a little bit more space back here. And essentially what we're going to do is set up a steam engine for each of these with a clutch. The steam engines are more than enough to power these without having to use any gearboxes or anything, which is great because it means we're not going to have to use any lubricant or maintain these at all. So first things first, we're going to take where are the clutches, the clutches right here. And we're going to set these up with these and we do need to flip these around with the screwdriver oh my gosh nope i screwed that up okay so we want the red to be on that red and red i believe yeah that's what we want so then we want the steam engines to go right behind these and flip those once we get them down and okay so there we go now we just got to dig out below these and set up the nether rack and I will wait to light it until we start getting water pumped into them just because I mentioned this before. If you do set these up and get them too hot and then put water into them, they'll just kind of explode. So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that they're cool enough. I believe it's like 100 degrees Celsius and you put water in, they're going to explode. Um, not exactly sure on the temperature, but pretty sure that's it. So what we can do now is take the liquid pipes and just pipe them along the back of these right here. And... Then we can take the pump out, do a regular pump setup with two DC electric engines and a shaft junction, just like we did inside. You know what? I actually need to keep this iron shovel on my hot bar. So we can set it up right over here, I guess. Yeah, because we, yeah, we'll just, we'll set it up back here just so it's a little bit easier. If we ever do need to access this netherrack, we don't want it putting out the fire. And then we can throw the pump right here. 
and we can full no we can leave it like that actually then we can throw the shaft junction right here throw the dc electric engine right there and right there and then go and do some rotating so those need to get rotated like that and this needs to get rotated like this, like that right there so that should be good and then if we take one of the levers we can just throw this down right here flip these on that'll start spinning and you can see it makes like the screeching noise which i was you know a little worried that you guys wouldn't enjoy but apparently you guys do want it uh, it probably really isn't that loud to you guys it's kind of quiet for me and that's at full volume so oh no we need the infinite pool there we go okay that should be good should be getting water to all these guys uh hopefully at a good enough rate and now that they all have water in them that one's got a that one's got a little bit of water in it I don't know if that's I'm gonna, I might have to let this fill up a little bit before we kick these on because this one's gonna get the most initially uh, I actually I'm curious it might have been better to set it up like right back here in the center so that it's evenly getting distributed but it's the same amount of water that's gonna be going in all of them so it doesn't really matter that much uh, I'll just have to keep an eye on it a little bit to make sure that these don't run over and I guess I can manually fill this one at the end a little bit uh, just to help it out so there we go that one's at four that one's at five so we can light the fire under these cover them up start planting the canola seeds and i won't kick the actual clutch on until we're ready to go because there's no point in having it on yet so where's my flint and steel right there and get out some dirt just to cover this up so light these uh light this one and there we go so these should all be ready to go once we allow the clutches to fire them off and the fans will start going then now one thing to keep in mind and i want to take a look at the book just to show you guys right now is for the fan if we open it up and we go to the i believe it's yeah it's farming you can see the picture of the fan right there uh the fan emits a stream of air and it's essentially what you would think it's going to push uh items that can be moved faster with greater input so it can move heavier uh entities and stuff like that it's got a minimum uh, minimum power um, but the fan at higher speeds can also uproot crops to harvest them and that's what we're going to be doing So we don't want the putting out or spreading fires. That's irrelevant to us But we do want it to uproot crops which is going to come at a harvesting speed of 512 radians per second and then you can see the range right here is calculated through that equation if you're curious but the item vacuum or yeah, the item vacuum is going to allow us to kind of not really care about that because they'll just get sucked straight into that on the other side so what we can do now is set up a lever here to turn these on and off. Now, if you really wanted to make it automatic, you can set it so that when the whole like setup over there is full and your chests are full, you can turn it off. But for now, uh, we're just going to stick it with, I believe we can just, we'll just go with cobblestone for now. And we should be able to do it something along the lines of this right here and throw redstone and we'll just, we'll use a lever for this one too. So I think throwing the redstone like this and like this and then just putting a lever back here should allow them to turn on. So that one's on. The one down there should be on and that one's on. So once these are starting to uh, function, when they get to a high enough speed, which should be very soon. Yeah, you'll say, okay, so the fans are starting to run now. You can see um, this one is, yeah, okay, so that one just kicked on too. So if I were to throw an item, it gets blown away really fast and it gets kicked right over here. So, uh, I am going to flip the lever off right now because there's really no need for it to be on. And this one, as long as it's maintaining... Oh, wow. Okay, that jumped down really fast. Okay, so we're going to flip these off real quick. Uh, I will allow these to fill up. We're not going to need it to run right now. Yeah, so if we flip these off, it should... Huh. Actually, don't know if this is... Yeah, so these are just going to keep running then. Uh, we don't need these to be on, though. So... I do kind of need to worry about filling that up. I might do a couple more manual buckets over there just because I need to make sure this fills up. If there is an issue, I can just throw a second set of this on right here uh, on the other side and it should be perfectly fine. But I'll look into that once we start setting the rest of this up. Oh, that's the one thing I'm afraid of is pulling out water at the same time that this pump does. Nope. Okay, there we go. I should probably be grabbing it from a different infinite pool, but... Okay, so that one, geez, that is burning through that so fast. Yeah, so it would take a while for these to fill up. It does look like we do 
need to fill this or we do need to make a second setup so what i'll do now is i'll make a second setup for the same thing right over here we should have everything we need to do that and then i will go back in hopefully i'll have enough steel to make another pump and do the rest of the setup for the item vacuum so we have the dc engines we got the pump we have the shaft junction uh, luckily we do have an extra shaft junction and then i do just need to go get a little bit more a little bit more water and I don't, I really don't want that thing to blow up. So I am going to have to manually fill it just to make sure. But over here, we extended that two away and then there was the pool. So we're going to clear out this area right here for this. Set up the pool and then I'm going to manually transfer some over real quick before it blows up. So each one of these like barely does anything for this. Jeez. I feel like that is that an accurate representation of how much time is left in there i guess it is okay so we gotta get this setup running so the pump is going to get thrown we'll throw these right here the pump can go right there the shaft junction we're gonna have to clear this area out too uh shaft junction can go right here and we can rotate it like so and dc electric dc electric Lever will go back here. We're not ever going to really want to turn these off. There'd be no point to it. So we don't really need a lever, but might as well use one. Flip that on. That'll start pumping her up and it'll start filling this one up. So uh, you might not need it if you put it in the center here, but I want to make sure that these never run out if we're just constantly running it, which we probably will be. So now... This one should be good to go. Shouldn't have to worry about any of these. And this one should be relatively full over here. Yeah, that one's that one's full at 15. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Uh, whatever. So now what we're gonna do is set up the item vacuum after we plant all these canola seeds and let them start growing. So we can just plant all of these along here. And it won't harvest them until they are fully grown and there is a little bit of lag between them becoming fully grown and actually getting harvested so do not worry if you see one of these with the uh, yellow tops to it that it is not getting harvested it does take a little bit of time so it will harvest it trust me uh, assuming you're using the same setup and there is a little bit of loss from what i've seen on the item vacuum if it gets blown into an obscure place but what we can do is set it up right in the center over here so we'll just throw it throw it back one so we can throw it right here and what we're going to need to do is do another steam engine setup so I can use some of this dirt that I got to kind of fill in this area back here just so we have some room to work with. And I think that should be good. So this one is just going to, again, get it directly from the steam engine. And we actually don't need to worry about using any of the clutches over here. I forgot the name again. But we don't need to worry about using the clutch over here. So we can fill this in with nether rack and do the same thing. But I do think I need, yeah, I am going to have to go inside now and see if we can make another pump setup so over here we should have a little bit of iron left that i processed and some steel left so we got 17 units of steel left we can throw the iron in here let it run and hopefully that'll be enough steel we do have a little bit of excess stuff so we need another pump and two dc electric engines hopefully we have what we need so we need an impeller three liquid pipes we have the liquid pipes we have the glass right here so we need the impeller, which is relatively easy to make. Unfortunately, we don't have any extra steel gears, but we have the impeller. And then we're going to need the two base panels, which is fine. So we have that. So we have everything we need to make this. So click that in there. So we got the pump. And now all we need are two DC electric engines. I think we should be good to go on these. We actually might be a little bit short. Which would be an Actually, no, we got two sets of six. So we should, should be good, I think. Uh, two... Okay, so we, we might be a little bit short. Let's see. Make the base panel. Yeah. Make this. Make another set of base panels. Oh, are we going to be one short? No, okay, because we need four for these. Okay, so that's unfortunate. I think I'm going to hop off camera right now, guys. Go get, like, one vein of iron, process it, and then we should be good to go. Hop back and we can finish this whole setup. Okay, guys, so we are back. I managed to find, like, one vein of iron. I immediately came back, processed it, and now we've got enough to make the two DC electric engines, which is all that we are going to need. And then we got the pump. We got to fill up our two buckets with water, and we will be good to go. So, you know what? We can just grab water from out here. Uh, actually, no, we already... 
We already have the infinite pool. No, this is not the infinite pool we're using for this, though. It's just awkwardly close to the one that we're going to be making. So we'll make the infinite pool for this one right over here. And we can set it up. Going to have to get rid of this right here, though. I actually probably should have set it up over there. But I want to keep a little bit of room outside the door. So typically we set it up like this. So we do the pump here. We're going to have to flip it with the screwdriver. And there we go. DC electric engine goes there, one there. We need the extra shaft junction that we have, which can go there. Rotate this one around a little bit more. And this one needs to get rotated there. And we should be good to go. I just need to put the last lever on this one. Flip it and hook up the liquid pipes and set this on fire. So get out some dirt, set that on fire. And, oh, you know what, do the liquid pipes have to go in the back? They might. Let's, uh, let's check. Yeah, it looks like they might have to go, they have to go in the back. That might have been a poor setup right there. I should have just moved it over one. But, I will do that off camera. You get the idea. This system will be running. The item vacuum will eventually suck it up once this gets hot enough. And I guess if I have some bones in here, I can bone meal it and show you guys just as like a proof of concept. I don't have any bones in here, unfortunately, but I have tested this out. Do not worry. It works. One is almost grown, but I don't want to make you guys sit here and wait for that to grow. So this is the automated farm setup. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit about it, learned how to use some of the stuff related to it. If you don't want to make a setup this big or this complicated, you can make your own using a little bit of the information you learned today. But if you found the guy or if you found the video informative, or entertaining in any way, feel free to give it a like because it does help me out a lot. And I will talk to you guys later.